Hey you guys, it's Minzy here. Today I am starting on my ping pong tabletop project. So this is gonna be an exterior ping pong table. I have a product that was gifted to me by Total Boat. Let me grab it. Here is the varnish that I was gifted from Total Boat Marine Supplies. It is called a Halcyon varnish and it is a water-based varnish. And this is really what inspired this project. I've been wanting to make an outdoor ping pong table, but I live in Florida and and the elements here are so harsh on wood and anything that lives outside. So it wasn't until I was gifted this Halcyon water-based varnish from Total Boat that I decided to go ahead and make this ping pong table. We have a ping pong table. It currently lives on our back patio. It's in that screened patio and we play ping pong a lot. However, the patio is just a tiny bit too small to really be able to play and actually back up from the table a bit. That's why I decided to go ahead and make an outdoor ping pong table which will eventually live right in that space. I'm going to take this area that I'm working in right here and do a pea gravel patio and then my ping pong table will sit right over there so that we can back up from the table a little bit when we play. I have two sheets of plywood. A ping pong table is nine feet by five feet. I'm gonna make it out of plywood. I bought this three quarter inch birch. I went back and forth and back and forth and back and forth on how I was gonna make this. If I would get solid wood and joined together dimensional lumber. In the end, I decided to go ahead and just buy plywood. So I'm gonna use this four by eight sheet as my centerpiece. I'm gonna rip this, four, actually other way around. I'm gonna rip this four by eight sheet down into five and a half inch strips to go around the outside of that four by eight sheet of plywood so that it will total up nine feet by five feet. I'm gonna use these one by sixes basically as braces underneath to hold these two pieces together. So I will attach these to the bottom side to basically support the seams and I will probably pocket hole screw the pieces all together and then eventually build some sort of a base. But today I will just be doing the tabletop and potentially finishing the tabletop with the Halcyon. So, let's get started. Okay, so the first step is to go ahead and rip down the sheet of plywood into the five and a half inch strips. And I could do this with a table saw. I do have one, but I'm not super comfortable with it. And because this three quarter inch plywood is so heavy, it's really difficult for me to handle by myself. So I just used my circular saw I marked the five and a half inch strips and then I used the one by six as my guide and just clamped the uh, one by six to the plywood and then ran my circular saw fence against the one by six basically as my jig. So once all the pieces were cut, now I'm flipping the plywood over so that I can fasten the five and a half inch strips to the plywood centerpiece. Um, obviously, I needed to have the bottom or the bad side up so that I could put my pocket holes in there. So that's what I'm doing right now is um, getting ready to put in the pocket holes to join the five and a half inch strips all the way around. And because my lumber is eight feet, I did the eight foot pieces or strips on the sides and then I'm gonna use a five foot strip of five and a half inch plywood on each end. Does that make sense? So I'm just setting up to do the um, pocket holes with my handy dandy Craig jig, which is such a fantastic tool. I use it all the time for so many different projects. Okay, I'm gonna show you a little trick that I learned. I don't remember where, but. Um, so with this piece of the, this spot right here, I put these two new holes because in between these two, the board was low on this side. So if I push down on this, it was not level with this side. So this one was low. So that means that the top 
would have been uneven and that's no good. So what I did is I put a screw in here. Can you see that? I put a screw in here just a little bit and then you take your hammer on the side that's low and then you can pull, you know, pull this side up a little bit so that it's nice and level and then put your pocket screws in there. And I've got to do that again down there. But that's a good way to make sure that you're level straight across and then put your screws in. There, perfectly level. Whoop. Okay, so now that's much better. Okay, so at this point, I've got the two long sides attached to the center, and I've got the other end attached as well with pocket hole screws. So now I'm doing this last piece, and then after this, the side, the one by twos to go all the way around. The way that I did this is I lined up the one end, and then I, um, I used my speed square to draw a line, and then I just made sure to cut on the outside of that line in order to make this the exact width of the whole tabletop because I'm not great at measuring, marking, and cutting properly. I seem to always get it wrong, so I actually just laid it out and it comes out perfect that way if you use a, a square. So now I'm gonna attach this to this and then the one by twos. So y'all see that I am not high tech. I don't have a lot of fancy tools. I do things just hacker methods, but it gets done and the results are pretty decent. So I just wanted to say that to encourage you if you're thinking about doing this, but you don't think you can or you don't have the tools or whatever, just give it a shot. You can gather the tools as you go and you can, you can do it. Um, so just give it a try. Obviously, I, I don't do things perfectly or the right methods, but it works. Okay, so now I'm attaching the kind of like framing, I guess, just to also shore up these joints and try to keep the table from warping at all. What I'm doing is I've cut these one by sixes and I'm going to attach them to the bottom of the table, basically two and a half on this side and two and a half on this side of all the joints all the way around. So I'm gonna go right to the edge on this and fasten with screws on the bottom. So I'm just going to mark a line um, so I know where to put that piece of wood back because I am going to glue and screw all the one bys to the bottom of the table to really uh, join this and make it one, one piece. So I'm just covering the one by, uh, one by six with, um, Gorilla glue, Gorilla wood glue, and I'll use a paintbrush to spread that on the whole thing, and then flip that over and attach it to the bottom of the table with uh, short screws, obviously, that won't go through the top, um, and making sure that I have the pocket holes all covered, um, and everything's straight and lined up. So now I'll just put the screws in to hold that. I, and I used exterior screws to hold that to the bottom of the table. Okay, so now I've got all of these glued and screwed all the way around. I did two and one eight away from the edge so that I would have a nice um, support on the joints between the center piece and the outside pieces and it also covers up all those pocket holes and makes that a little bit more watertight. So now I'm going to take these one by twos and I'm going to glue them and pin nail them to the edge here, level with the top, of course. So I think I might flip this whole baby over in order to do that, but I'm going to go ahead and cut those one by twos with miters at the corner. So it'll be a nice miter joint at each of the corners. 
And then I can flip this baby over and start finishing the top and figure out what I'm gonna do for a base, which I think I'm going to make another one of these table bases to match my tables. And you know what? I might even just use one of these, so. Okay, so I've got all my one by twos cut except for the very last piece. So I've got all but like the last piece cut and I, I'm not gonna cut that until I get them all fastened and then I'll cut that very last piece. But first I'm gonna flip the table over um, because obviously I wanna match the one by two trim to the top of the table. So I wanna be able to see that and I don't wanna flip the table with this on there because I feel like it would be too easy for it to come off. I'm gonna glue that and pin nail it. And I cut all of my miters on that little plastic miter saw because I I have a miter saw, an electric miter saw, but for some reason I always get my cuts wrong. I don't know why. So I just used that little guy for one by twos. It was quick and easy and very accurate, so. Just take care not to get any glue on your tabletop because it will stain differently, so just be careful. So I made these two tables a couple years ago. They're Anna White plans. I made them for Thanksgiving like two years ago and I made them so that the tables could go side by side normally. So they're kind of narrow. You see there's one of the tops. It's 11 feet long, but only like 30, 30, 32 and a half inches wide so that they could sit side by side most of the time on my patio and then at Thanksgiving take them out and make them long ways so that I could seat about 27 people. So anyway, there's the base. And as you see, I never really finished staining them. Anyway, there, there's the base. I'm gonna put the ping pong table on that for the time being and then I'll probably build another one. Um, but right now I'm just gonna stabilize the ping pong table with an extra piece of wood right there um, so that it's wider, so that it doesn't start to droop on the sides. So I've leveled it up and it's pretty darn level. And I'm not gonna go crazy with leveling it right now because because my plan is to um, pea gravel this whole area. Anyway, we've got rocks right next to the house. Let's see if I can make this darker. So we've got rocks here next to the house. I'm going to extend this all the way out so it'll be around this out to the pond and then kind of curve it back around to include this table. I put wood filler into all the cracks this morning. Let's see if I can maybe show you in the shadow. Mm, anyway, well, maybe not. Uh, I let it dry for a couple hours and then I sanded the whole table there. So now I'm gonna tape off the edges all the way around the edge of the table and then the stripe down the center for the regulation line, then put some stain on. So that's the next step. No explanation needed really for the wood stain, just apply it in the direction of the grain of the wood. I did I did use two or three coats of the stain. So, you know, I used a soft cloth and uh, that's it. So I just took, um, I just put a coat of Olympic waterproofing stain semi-transparent stain on the bases of both tables and now I'm going to go ahead and take the tape off of this so that I can see how this looks before I put on the varnish. Love it. Pretty crisp line for stain. I was really a little nervous that the stain was going to seep under the tape but it's 
pretty crisp. So I'm gonna let this stain cure overnight because the Halcyon, the Total Boat Marine, the Halcyon product is a water-based product and you can put it over oil-based stain. However, they tell you to make sure that it's fully dry, fully cured. So I'm gonna let this go overnight. It's time to apply the Halcyon varnish. I'm mixing it up a little bit. I have to say it's a little bit risky doing this outside because of the stuff that can fall on it. But this thing is so heavy and so large that I don't know that I can even get it inside. So it's a good thing it dries really fast. It comes in this nifty little resealable pouch, which I've got a plastic bag around it because I ripped a hole in it. So the super nice thing about that uh, varnish, the Total Boat varnish, is that it comes in that convenient little pouch with a pour spout, basically, and a cap. So you can just pour it right on your surface and then put the cap right back on. It's so easy and so neat. You don't need a tray or anything like that. So, and the fact that it's water-based and dries so quickly is awesome. Okay, so I can recoat in an hour and it's already soaking in and dry right here. That's the beauty of working with a water-based product like this varnish is that it dries so fast. And look, it didn't even raise the grain really. It, it, it feels as smooth as it did after I sanded it, which is really nice. So one hour and I'll blow this off again and then recoat. And we're gonna do this four, probably four times to the underside of this one by two pine here, as long as I can. Yeah, see this right here? Look at that, it's already dry. 